Uh, Sensei, okay. welcome back. Welcome Thank back. Thank you. This is Lauren, and I'll moderate the next uh, few minutes. Okay. Uh, we've had a, quite a few questions in the last two, two or three minutes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, <clears throat> So someone wrote, when I'm in a comfortable dimension, say level three, okay. sometimes as I try to move into a bigger space, I feel sad. I feel emotional sadness. I'm not sure if this is because I feel like I'm losing the previous level or joy in the next one, but it feels like my emotions are getting in the way. How do okay. I through my emotions as I... Okay, maybe, understand. maybe. Okay, first, don't say bigger. I don't want you to dissipate out there into the vastness of things. Or if you get a piece of it, that's fine. So careful of the word bigger. Say finer. Oh, since they told me that, say finer, not bigger. And as you move into the next dimension, there may be qualities there. One possibility is before the truth of the qualities can show. There may be an emotional reaction to those qualities that is not quite what the qualities are. So again, don't know quite uh, where you're at with it, but if you're still a tourist and you're starting to feel something, that could be where it's emotional reaction, whereas you take up residence and really become a citizen, it's different. It's qualities that are mixed in there. And you're hearing the truth from that. When you're a visitor, you don't really catch the truth of it. Okay, the green card, bit better. A full citizenship, ah, much clearer on that. So I would guess at the moment uh, that possibly it's the uh, get the more hang out there Get fuller there. Don't let the emotional reaction stop you. Write it in your notebook, not physically, but in your notebook on this journey that you're feeling that. And then continue being, getting a green card, continue being a fuller citizen. And then we'll see uh, what's going on. Okay, so that's a guess on my part. Is that clear enough? Thank you, Sensei. I have another question from a different yeah. person. Person asks, Nado Sensei, how do you, how do you make the shift? Oh, again, there's a lot of travel vehicles. Depends if I'm just doing the first simple ones. For me, uh, a word I like is easy. Easy. And that settles me down. It's not just a word I say, it's a word I feel. Easy, easy. And I can already feel it settling and sort of opening a bit, easy. So that's sort of a word for me. Uh, I used to use that word a lot at Esalen. I just throw it out, easy. And then some people would come back after a year or two who had done that workshop and say, tell me that word easy is magic. And I was like, at first stunned, because I don't know, I was, I was just throwing it out, so to speak, not realizing easy. Uh, but in those people, apparently using the word easy as an experience, easy, they were naturally being moved or being present in a finer dimension there. They thought the word was magic. So it was for them a very good travel vehicle. For me, easy is a nice travel vehicle. If I'm doing finer work, meaning finer dimensions, uh, then let's see, what, what would I use? I choose a little more fo focus. Careful of that word. Focus. Easy and, and finer. Easy and finer sensing. Yeah, I would push on it. For me, uh, knowing I'm moving through finer, I want to get to a much finer place before I can check out whatever it is I'm researching. 
So I kind of focus a bit on inner finer, inner finer, inner finer. Don't know if I said that well. Thank you, Sensei. Another question. When we're in a particular dimension, is there nourishment or something mm. that we can get from the dimension oh, yeah. before we move on to the next dimension? Oh, yeah. That's why my body feels stronger and more alive and ha. Ah. So, yes, a dimension is uh, represents a level, and every level has energies in it, if you would. Uh, and as you uh, become Mr. Red, all those energies are starting to circulate. You're you start to glow. You ever see somebody who was having a special day? The damn people are glowing. Okay, so of course you get nourished. That's part of the game. Uh, so just to follow up on that, yeah. How do we know when we've had enough of one dimension and we're ready to ah, move to the next? Good dimension? question. Good question. Whew. One, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Don't stay there forever. Okay. Uh, what did those sensei call that? Uh, I forget the word. But don't just die out there or sort of eh. Uh, now, what I used to do was I'm a bit of a pusher. So in doubt, I would push for next. Say, okay, come on, next. And I would push for it. Uh, now, be careful of, of uh, mentally pushing. Okay, next, 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 next. Ready, what is it? Uh, you, you, you should go through the actual dimensions. Click and experience each one. Click. Later it gets fast, but you're still experiencing it. Okay? I think of it like checkers. Uh, checker, one uh, square at a time. Then you finally reach a certain point, and they king you. And the king can go through the same territory, shoom. So, but get in the habit of a step at a time. Uh, and then later, that will naturally get fast. Okay. Uh, or sensei used the words. Uh, anyways, best word was, uh, to me was pipelining. Uh, just shoo, shoo. He said you can pipeline your way there. But before you can pipeline, you kind of got to know the terrain a little bit. And I forget what word we used to call that uh, type of drilling. Like, uh, I can't remember the word right now. But it's kind of a slower getting the flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then moving on to next and getting there, situating there, getting the flavor soaking in it for a little bit. And then da, 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 da. Uh, but it sense is that after a bit, choom, you, you pipeline right through all of those. Okay, you take the express elevator after a while. But at first, you want to hit each floor and check it out. You don't have to walk the whole floor. Just check it out a bit. And after a while, you can have an express ele elevator. So there's no set rule. You have to kind of play with it. You see, when you're uh, moving too fast, and usually it'll be an idea moving too fast, and uh, when in doubt, if you think you're staying at this level, for me, there's a certain flavor after a bit of just feeling squared away at that level. I can't explain squared away. I just feel like I'm pretty good all red, using that example. I just feel like I'm fairly full, that I really can't squeeze much more out of that right now. Then I move on. So you're gonna have to figure out through your own system when you're procrastinating and when you're pushing it too fast and just starting to get an idea about better. That's, that's for you to figure out. But does that help? I hope. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, the next series of questions come from a slightly different angle. A number of people have commented that they really like this practice because it deals with a sense of space or freedom within a space and some people so numerous people have said you know they're they're sheltering at home and huh. they're 
physical space is very cramped and limited. Uh huh. And uh -huh. At, so, let me jump in. That's a very good time to get some inner room. And, and so some, go, go, go. some of the questions are how do I get a feeling of inner space? How can I feel freer in this physically smaller space? And some people are saying, you know, this process that you just led us through tonight makes me feel like I have more space, even though I obviously, it's the same. Oh, yeah. 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 It's an inner more space. The outer space is not going to change. Your, your apartment is still a damn small apartment. Ooh, do I want to tell you this story? At one time, I was incarcerated. I, I'm a bad boy. At one time, I was incarcerated and placed in a con solitary confinement. That's a real tight space. First thing I started to do was inner, and I started to get into more room, and I would let my body move in the more room. I could not, if I had stayed normal, be affected by that small space and become a small person. I couldn't do that, and I knew it. So I did inner finer space and I started to move freer. So even though I was physically in a small space, inside I was in a big plenty of room space. Yeah, that's the game. That's the game. When you're hanging out with a room full of assholes, same set of room full of assholes, somebody, you have to go inner to a finer level of you so you can be the squared away person in a room full of assholes. You can be the intelligent person in a room full of assholes. It's the same practice over and over for everything. Is that, is that clear? Did I say that clear? Yes. Yes, you did, Sensei. And, okay. you know, so you've just explained how to feel, access more space internally, even if your physical space is yeah. cramped. But here I have a comment from someone. Uh, hey, hang on. Let me let me jump in a moment. I am going to have to to break the laws. He washed his hand. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now there's a physical pressure. Now in Aikido, I shift dimensions to an energy flow level. I don't feel that pressure. Okay. I'm sort of aware of it, but I'm not. Oh my God, I'm not in this physical state. In the physical state, it's beginning to hurt. In this physical state, I'm not sure if I can move. I change my level, inner, finer, energy flow level. There it is. And just being in that state, he's already being affected a bit. We're not hardly moving. He's moving. This inner state is active. It's not a makeup bullshit idea. It's a fact here. He's starting to move. Okay, so th that's why I practice Aikido, to remind me to be in a better state. Okay, that's why we do those dumb practices of squeezing. Not, okay, he's squeezing me, how do I throw him? No, he's squeezing me, how do I move into a better inner state dimension to be a better level of me under pressure? That's the game, not this outer bullshit stuff that everyone sees they don't see the inner work so when i saw sensei again where is this guy coming from where's his inner resonance that he could these things happen it was like well he he, he he turned his finger that way what the hell is that about oh, anyway i cut you off go ahead thank you sensei so <laughs> someone has said that you're the practice you've just led us through from finer dimensions, from a one by one to a two by two to a three by three, has made them feel bigger. But now their apartment feels too small for them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, oh boy! <laughs> what should they do? What can they do? You've made them too big for their tiny apartment. I I, I have to feel this one. Ah, so I have no answer off the top. might be uh, the maybe better would be 
the inner finer, yes, a sense of bigger, but it's inner finer, bigger. Uh, as if I sort of don't feel, it's kind of like him squeezing my arms at a certain level. I don't, I don't feel it as a squeeze from out here because I'm in a finer realm. Uh, they may have done the bigger a little too in the heavier, the earlier dimensional form where I'm bigger, but my room is still only this big and I'm getting crowded here. In finer, there should be a sense of uh, the walls not being there. So back to my story, my confession about being in captivity, uh, uh, in solitary, and it was a tight solitary. Uh, when I got into my inner, uh, the walls were still there, but I was in this world of freer. Didn't mean I could walk through the walls, but I think that's possible, but that's another story. Uh, but my, my, my world was freer. Uh, if you're a little too heavy on this bigger, then I hit the wall and, and I had the same problem again. I'm bigger in a small apartment, bouncing off the wall. It's, it's a little inner finer. I think you did it too, too heavy instead of finer. Again, don't know if I said it well, but that's my guess there. Sensei, another question. Does the dimensional work to find this finer dimension, does it need constant maintenance? Is there sort of an ebb and flow, even on a daily routine or something like that? Oh, yeah. See, because we're in a flow in creation. The whole creation ebbs and flows. Oh, Sensei called that the echo theory. Uh, the great breathing before breathing, before breathing, the great, great, great grandparents of breathing is, uh, is that pulsation. Uh, so, so yeah, we're affected by that. So you can have a, a, a pretty good day and wake up tomorrow and feel a little pressured. Where'd that come from? You haven't done anything wrong, but it waves back and forth. And uh, to later, as we practice more, we'll recognize that push and I tell people there, later you, when you recognize you can feel you're being pushed into tighter. And I tell people, you've got a few tricks now how to retain yourself as better. And if for any reason you're being pushed so hard, you can't move into a better, be careful. Don't sign a contract. Don't have a heart to heart with your spouse. Don't drive faster. Be careful, because you know you're in a tighter place. You just can't get out of it yet. As you wait a bit, it eventually ah, it picks up that beat. Okay? So, so, yeah, there is an ebb and flow through everybody's system. Is that okay? Go ahead. Uh, I have another question, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, so somebody I got writes. No place to go. Somebody writes. Uh, one of the one of the our participants wrote. Uh, I'm feeling dull. How do I develop awareness to dimensionality or dimensions? Okay. One possibility here. Uh, I'm thinking I'm dull. Uh, if I'm really dull, it's hard for me to even get going. Uh, sometimes to, hey, wake up. I, I break through. I, I do something like, like that. Uh, you've seen it in the movies. The guy is getting a bit weird and his buddy slaps him. And the guy who got slapped said, thanks, I needed that. He He's slapped him out of his craziness, his stupidity, his dullness. And the guy said, oh, thanks. I was getting caught in dullness. Boom, that slap woke him up. I think they said something similar, but I can't recall the exact way he said it. Sometimes you have to, I don't know, a sense of jar them, jar them to, to get them to wake up to this. I forget what word he used and in what context, but it was something similar. So that's what I do with myself. Uh, I hate with myself to, to break out of this and 
ha, to move into this. Uh, it's kind of like Shazam. You understand Shazam? <laughs> uh, it's a fast form of moving from eh, to something better. Okay. Oh, since they had a way of doing that, I think he used a uh, eut. I think that was his fast form when in the, in an emergency. Eut, and suddenly he'd be oh, sensei as we know him. So if he was caught up in being an old man, which was his words. Uh, when he wanted to refer to himself as a normal old human being, he'd say this old man. But he was so good, he said, e you and suddenly he's old sensei. Nothing can defeat me. No time or space, all that stuff, which was a fact, an actual experiential fact. Uh, so I, I don't know what to call that screen through, uh, breakthrough, uh, shazam through. Okay, and thank I kind of like I kind of like Shazam. <laughs> if if you would, we have one final question, and then I yeah. believe we're out of time. Okay. And uh, someone writes, uh, "How do you develop awareness of dimensions or sensitivity to dimensions?" Well, first we have to be careful here because remember, awareness was that second picture. I, I want to be aware of that. So first, let's be careful of that word, as some people use it. Also, the words are always tricky because people do different things with different words. So awareness to him might be different than my sense of awareness. Okay. Okay. Anyway, awareness. how do I develop awareness? If I actually play this, this game and experience the experience, Aren't I now in the experience aware of who I am and what I'm in? Aren't I aware of the redness using that picture? I'm aware by experience. A lot of people say, well, first I have to be aware of it and then I can experience it. Ah. Some cases is a variation on that, but be in the experience, then you'll be aware. Be in the experience. After a while, you'll know what goes on and you can tell people what goes on because you experienced it. Now, a lot of people turn that around and say, oh, I have to know what that means before I can experience. And they're screwing up. They're too intellectual, okay? So experience the experience and then there'll be knowledge there. It will be known. Uh, what was the second part of that question? I, I believe you've just answered it. Oh. Uh, yeah, experience, experience. That's all I've ever done, experience. That's where my knowledge comes from, experience. I tried to tell you that when I tell you stories, when people say, oh, you must have read that book, you must have read that book, because you sound like, oh, no, you sound like him, no, you sound like him. I said, no, I purposely never read any of those books, never. So. I could just experience inner, and I got inner knowledge, and then I would teach. It wasn't from reading somebody's book and telling you, I can do that a bit now, of course. Uh, but uh, I didn't do it for 10 years or more. I didn't touch a book because I wanted the inner knowledge to show, to, for people to try to catch, oh, it's inner experience knowledge. And people are still on, oh. And they were shocked when they realized that it was known without reading about it. They were like, oh, they, they couldn't understand it. Because they thought everything had to be, I got to learn it. No, I got to experience it. As I experience it, it will be known. And I'll share it with you if it's proper to do so. Is that okay? Thank you so much, Sensei. And uh, we're uh, just past 8 p.m. Okay, good night. And, uh, I'd like to thank you once more, Sensei. Arigato gozaimashita. Yeah, uh, and uh, for the viewers, thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my last comments, I want to thank uh, Richard Moon and Ken Cron and Katja. Katja. Yes. yes, thank all those people, yes. And i uh, also like to tell you that if you're, uh, we've captured the questions that people sent in tonight and if they didn't all get uh, voiced, uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, they will be forwarded to Nado Sensei to uh, uh, 
so that he can uh, be aware of your questions. And I'd like to remind everybody that uh, Richard Moon will teach a class on the virtual in the virtual dojo tomorrow at 4 p.m. And uh, we will uh, uh, also have an Aiki Dialogues class on Monday at 6.30 p.m. And with that, 